Oh, okay. So you'd like to know my opinion on Western culture. I'm not sure that you're going to like the answer to that question. In fact, I'm almost positive that you're not going to be satisfied with my answer. In fact, I don't think anyone, nobody, will like my opinion. Because what I have to say is, outside of the mainstream narrative, now, it's going to ruffle feathers. Now, our culture, this meticulously crafted Western society, is a relentless affliction. Akin to a cancer that, if left unchecked, spreads wildly, consuming its victims without remorse. A cunningly woven deception plays out before us, where success is measured solely by the accumulation of material possessions, while virtues such as compassion and kindness and inner radiance are given little to no credit. When we speak of individuals or families, we rarely hear accolades like, what a remarkable person they are, what a magnanimous heart that exudes kindness and compassion. Instead, it's all about the external markers of wealth and material success. We find ourselves saying, oh yes, I know them. They own that grandiose house atop the hill with the thriving restaurant down on Main Street. Man, they're doing well. I wish I could be like them. Meanwhile, those who exemplify deeper qualities fade into the background, quickly forgotten. Our society fails to recognize the inherent worth of these attributes as they do not align with the established norms. Everything we taught, everything we hear implores us to invest in our future, accumulate as many fleeting possessions as possible and strive for elevated financial success. There is no mention of exploring the depths of our own being, seeking self-discovery, forging meaningful connections, or embracing the present moment. The architects of this societal machinery know its inner workings intimately. They understand every cog, every accessory, and how they fit together to serve their purpose. But what happens? What happens when a component begins to question its designated role? What if it veers from its program path modulating on a different frequency, typically such a part that defies its intended purpose, is sometimes refurbished, but most often discarded, only to be replaced by an identical copy. Now fathom that. Individuality finds no place in this machine. Despite our efforts to modify and adapt, nothing can overcome the relentless clunking and churning. The parts within remain oblivious to the true nature of the machine, its purpose and its outputs. They simply know their place and dare not question the existence beyond their assigned roles. Eventually though, everything deteriorates beyond salvage and the entire contraption is discarded, replaced. It never held any true value or any genuine value. This is how we, as a Western civilization, exist in the present day. We have obscured the line that separates necessity from greed, applying a thick glaze to smooth its edges. We have indulged, we have overindulged, neglecting to nourish the deepest recesses of our being, our spirits, the sole source of true meaning that transcends the material realm. We witness starvation, right? Excuse me. In so-called third world countries, we label them as third world countries, yet we bear the responsibility for it. Now, before you get mad and shut off this video, let me dissect this truth. We spend approximately 12 years of our lives within an education system that cultivates a deep attachment to the familiar. Within this bubble, 
we consider to be our cognitive reality, we learn a repetitive curriculum that often lacks practical application. Yes, we acquire reading, writing and basic math skills, but we're not shown how to apply them. Not in a meaningful way. As we graduate high school, we remain devoid of a true sense of purpose other than the preconceived and implanted ideas that we carry. Generations flood the workforce and universities lacking passion, drive and a true sense of their calling. They spend additional years learning specialised skills for the sake of securing a job only to discover later that they yearn for something different, something more fulfilling. But alas, bills must be paid, so we persist. We persist to distract ourselves from the emptiness within. We tirelessly strive to meet society's predefined benchmarks of success. We work tirelessly for years on end to save enough money for a down payment on a house. So we go out and we buy a house, our own house. But this is merely the first step. This is just the beginning. We already know it's not the house that we truly desire. We set our sights on a slightly bigger, a better one. So we go out, we, we work harder, spending more time away from our loved ones, all in pursuit of an even bigger house. One that widens the spaces that separate us within our own walls. And if that isn't enough, we are told it would be wise to acquire more, get another property, rent it out, to secure our future in our retirement, in our old age. We willingly adopt this principle. We amass cars, boats, clothes, toys, mobile homes, endlessly striving for more. And yet we have the audacity to look out onto this world and go, it's cruel. When will we finally realize that enough is enough? Thus, this destructive cycle perpetuates until all the parts have worn out and we find ourselves in a junkyard, lost, forgotten, and ultimately irrelevant. We accept this fact without questioning why, for we are kept perpetually busy leaving no time for introspection as life slips through our very fingers, the clock ticking, the hands turning. We rush about enslaved to a few ethereal ideals, mortal concepts designed to trap, confine and isolate us. Meanwhile, our passions, our fire and our creativity wither away, dissipating into the ever-rising smoke of our own anguish. And we submit. We shrug our shoulders, sigh and submit. We have the audacity to gaze upon this ugly truth, yet fail to take any action, not for anybody else. But not even for ourselves. We are our own worst enemies. We are our own encumbrances, our own limitations. How can a high school bully ever be defeated unless challenged? How can a system, a dictator, an ideology ever change unless confronted? So I leave you with this profound question today. How will you utilize the finite number of days remaining in your life Will you rise to discover who you were destined to be? Or will you retreat into the whisper of a cold, dark night forever long? What could have been?